Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the Rusty Beauty's Restorations and in this episode we're going to be working on the 64 Triumph TR4. In the previous two episodes we did a little bit of uh, assessment of everything. We went through the list that we have for this car with items that we need to take care of, but we also uh, assessed the engine, brakes and suspension and stuff like that and we determined what needs to be done. So what we figured about the engine is that it has a very low compression or actually some cylinders are low, some are high. And some people also suggested to do a wet test, with, which means to squirt some oil in the cylinders and uh, test again. But what I think actually we did was, we actually did a wet test because there's, there is oil in the cylinders. And uh, when we started the car, bluish white smoke was coming out, which, is, which means she is burning oil. So oil is coming into the cylinder and I suspect that the oil rings as well as the compression rings are, are not in a great shape. I can also hear a little bit of a knock when I start the engine in the beginning and also the owner told me that somebody in the past uh, told him that uh, probably he needs main bearings on this engine and he asked me to check them. So to check those I either have to go from under the car and do it the hard way or Maybe the easiest way is just to take the engine out and put it on a stand and do all that. So we're gonna go through everything. It has multiple leaks, it has oil pressure issues. So there's no point of keep testing the compression. And if I determine that it is the, the compression is low because of the valves, for example, what am I gonna take only the head out and deal with it and then take the oil pan off and deal with the main bearings? The transmission also needs to come out, so some leaks can be dealt with. I'm sorry about the dog. It's much easier if I take everything out and fix it on the bench and put, put it back together. It might not be total rebuilt. It might not need machining or anything, especially this is a sleeved block, so we can change sleeves if we have to, but I'm hoping that we only need to change rings and seals and gaskets and stuff like that. So anyways, we're gonna figure out the engine, but before that I wanna deal with something else and I'll tell you what right after the intro. All right, so if you remember the list that we had, we had um, something about electrical here. Oh, that's the old style, like the Spitfire. So this car has a positive ground and it has a wire that's under the dash that has been burnt, like somebody let all the smoke out of it. So we need to deal with that. So I want to deal with the electrical. Maybe we should fix this wire first, then switch the polarity, make it negative ground, make sure that everything runs and uh, the car starts and generator charges and all these things before we take the engine out. Like one thing at a time, because if we take the engine out and we start rebuilding it and then we start dealing with the electrical in the meantime while we are waiting for parts and stuff, then when we're putting together the car, we're gonna have way too many questionable things. And we ha if we have a little problem somewhere, there's no spark, for example, we won't know if it is the coil or it is something in the electrical. Of course, we can troubleshoot it, but I think it's much easier if we go one thing at a time. So I think today we're gonna look at the electrical and possibly the polarity. When we make sure that everything runs with the new wiring configuration, then we're gonna start taking the engine out. And we know that when we put it back on, if we have some issues, it's gonna be because of what something that we've done on the engine, not because of the wiring under the dash, let's say. So anyways, let's unhook this. I love these old style frames. <laughs> oh, there are buttons here that I'm forgetting. Okay. Out of all Triumphs, I think I like the TR4 soft top configuration best. You know what I mean? You see, this is lovely. Like, you can tell there's a frame here. The Spitfire also I like because you can take it out completely and you can put it inside the boot 
and the two arms go, one goes here and one goes there, and they're out of the way. You can't even see it when it's in the boot, but you have to take it out and stuff like that. This is really nice, actually, how, how it works, because it's, it gets hidden underneath, you see? The TR6 is the worst, because I don't like how it folds. The wings here, you have to fold on everything, and then it comes and closes a big portion of this shelf. And this shelf, actually, on my Spitfire, I use a lot. Anyways, I'm rambling. I think what we're going to do here first is we're going to take out the seats, because we're going to have to take them out anyways to undo the transmission cover and take everything to the front. But when we undo them, I'm going to be able to look under the dash. I'm going to have better access. I hope I don't need to remove the dash to get to that wire that is uh, burnt, but maybe we should do that so I can assess also the other wires, all the wiring behind the dash because it's it's critical thing. I'll see what I'm gonna do here and I'll bring you back. All right, let's see if we can slide this. Oh, perfect, wow. That went all the way out of my way. Oh, so let's take a look underneath. I took out the steering wheel as well. Let's see what's here. So, huh. Oh well. Hmm. Look at that. What is this? Oh my god. I can't figure out which wire is that. It goes inside the harness here. Alright, so we are here under the dash. And this is what's going on. So all this was taped with electrical tape. I removed the tape, so it wasn't super unsafe. So it looks like this is ground here, which means power in this car. And it looks like it's going to the signal light. I don't know, I still have to strip here, but um, I think I'm gonna take out the speedometer. I think that's the speedometer. No, this is actually the... Um, this is actually the tachometer. Okay, I think I'm gonna take this out so I can work on this part here, but I just wanted to show you. So I think this is the overdrive. They're just twisted wires here. They were taped too. They were not exposed like that. I exposed them, so don't get alarmed. But here, I don't know what's going on here, and I don't have access here for both my hands. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna work from outside. All right, so this is what's going on here. So, but this used to be the green with yellow, I can see, and this goes to earth underneath, you saw where it was bolted under the dash. But there's another wire here, see, that is out of the harness that is melted, and I don't know which one that is, but also if I look down the harness here, like right here, there's a whole strip that was melted. So we need to actually strip this blue tape from here all the way to there somewhere and see what's going on here because you can see exposed wire right here as well. Anyways, I'm gonna keep stripping. So this is the signal indicator. So this is this light, probably. Yeah, and that happened actually twice, I believe. I think originally that was the black wire that was connected here and it burned. And then somebody added this thing that I hate. I don't even know what these are called, but I think somebody connected the black wire to this yellow with green wire that they bolted under the dash. And then suddenly this happened again. So we have to see why this keeps happening. Anyways, I'm gonna go find the schematic so I know what I'm dealing with here. And we're gonna go from there. All right, so this is the diagram for early TR4 with the positive ground. This is for TR4A with the negative ground. So. I'm gonna go to this one. This is from Advanced Auto Wire, advancedautowire.com. So this is from for TR2 to TR4A, and they also have the TR250 
to TR6 o ears. So it is a great website that you can find these. Unfortunately, they don't have the GT6 and Spitfire, but I'm working on that actually. I'm making my own uh, colored GT6 wiring diagram so I can work on mine. Anyways, I'll show you that some other time. So this is TR2 and TR3, TR3A and 3B, and TR4. So that's what we're looking at. And uh, this is this, this uh, light on the dash. This, this one should be light green with purple. That comes from the flusher to the dash light. And the other side is the black, which goes to the ground. Let's fix the black wire. All right, I removed the tachometer and I started going through this wiring harness here. But you see, oh, the heater came on. I'm sorry, I'm gonna yell a little bit just as we started filming. Anyways, but I started stripping it and you see here where obviously a wire got overheated and melted and there's multiple other wires that are exposed. And this goes all the way here. You don't see it inside, but it also goes in that direction. And you see on that harness, it goes that way. And then it comes out here on this harness as well. So everywhere we see this black line, we have an issue. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to take apart the whole dash and strip this whole entire harness to make sure that everything is uh, isolated wherever something melted. So to take the dash out, there are some screws here and there. Then we're gonna pop the wooden dash out. We're gonna disconnect all the wires from the gauges and we're just gonna pull it out. And then we will see if we're gonna have to remove the whole harness from there to fix it or I don't know. Let me pull out the dash and we're gonna go from there. Okay, I'm almost ready to take it out, but look what I found here. Dun, dun, dun. There's even more, so we definitely need to take almost everything out and inspect the whole entire harness. Hopefully we don't need a new one. All right, so this is what's behind here. I removed some of the gauges. This is power that went to one of the studs on this gauge here and from there there was a bridge which was totally burned so that was the bridge that from here went to the other three gauges and i guess this was connected here like that but it was all burnt and on some of them actually there was this wire so somebody worked here because this wire would was bridging this gauge with this gauge, I think. So somebody restored the power after the short that happened here. Anyways, I'm gonna continue stripping. I'm gonna remove as many things as I can from here so I can strip the harness from the vinyl binding, bounding, whatever it is on the outside. And we're gonna keep going. All right, so the whole dash is out and I disconnected all the wires here also from these switches. Some of them I pulled together with, the, for example, the ignition. Hold on, come on. Okay, for the ignition, for example, I pulled it together with the switch. I don't know if this was connected. This wasn't connected here. So anyways, we're gonna have to look at everything because there's so much here, look, all this, all this, all this. We literally have to strip everything and isolate every single wire and redo it. But for this reason, we have to pull out the harness because I can't, I can't work here. I need to pull this part out. I'm familiar more with TR6. I was thinking that I can pull out all the wires from there and pull everything this way. But actually here it is the opposite on the TR4 because the voltage regulator and the fuse box and everything is on this side in the engine bay. 
uh, it's better if I pull this side of the harness this way. So I'm gonna disconnect absolutely everything from here, from the dip switch for the high and low beam, and also from here it goes inside the engine bay. So we have to disconnect everything from the engine bay as well. Uh, the rear harness goes on that side for the tail lights, so we don't have it here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna disconnect everything from here and we're gonna pull it out that way. And we're gonna work here. We're gonna see if it is worth saving or not. We have to pull it. Whether we change it or repair it, we still have to pull it. So anyways, I'm also gonna remove all the wiring from the radio, which is here. You can see it. Uh, these are the green are speakers. The white is the power and uh, and they go in the engine bay as well. So we're gonna disconnect all that too and we're gonna rebuild it whenever the time comes to put it back together the proper way. It's gonna stay in the glove box. The owner likes it there. So that's how it's gonna stay, but we're gonna run proper wires and speakers and everything. So I'm just gonna get rid of this wiring now. So it's out of my way. Also the glove box is sitting here with uh, zip ties, you can see up there it's nothing is holding it so we might buy a new i'm gonna talk to the owner we'll see we might buy a new glove box for here there's plastic ones available for tr6 and i believe they are the same ones for the tr4 anyway so i'm not gonna hold you here i'm just giving you updates every once in a while but lots of wires that we'll need to look at and decide whether it's better to fix it or to buy a new harness a new harness is almost 500 american plus shipping and import charges and stuff it's going to be probably around thousand canadian by the time it comes here so we better look at this one <laughs> all right the glove box is out as well together with the radio and all the wiring for the radio, even the one that went to the engine bay here. Let me show you. Like it was coming out this way, it was connected here, here, and over there for whatever reason. So all that wiring is gone now. And I believe our main harness is disconnected from everywhere. Also here from the engine bay, I pulled it out. This is for the brake switch and this is for the wipers uh, motor. So that was in the engine bay. This was the dip switch over there so it's pretty flexible so it shouldn't be too hard to pull it out this way wish me luck all right so that wasn't that hard now here we can clearly see that the problem was between here the signal light on the dash i don't know what happened here and it was a wire that was going here to i don't think it was the ignition switch i think it was one of the switches on the whatever panel that we should call it so and here so it was all one wire, power wire i believe from here through here to here so here we can see that there was no problem we're hoping maybe we should strip a little bit more that way as well but i don't think there was a problem here as well on this harness this was pretty much okay so yeah i'm gonna make it somehow easy to work i'd like to hold it like this can one of you hold it like this while i'm working on it <laughs> no we're gonna figure out some other way and we're gonna start stripping there and see what's gonna happen what we're gonna find my hands now all right so it's stripped and 
you can see that this was this wire so this black wire from the signal light that connected here and it went through the entire harness here all the way here and then it came down and connected to i don't know where i think that's one of the switches but it also from here it came in this direction and it comes here so, yep we're just gonna replace this wire that's the easy part the more complicated part is to make sure that all the other wires are still not burned so as we are splitting this old wire from these wires next to it we're gonna inspect them very closely and we will make sure that they are isolated each and every one separately all right so we need to run a new wire from here to this harness and from there back into this harness here okay that's what's left of it the burnt wire I removed it from the harness and it doesn't look that it did any damage to the other wires for example here you see where it uh, was touching this one this is just residue of the black wire that didn't melt the blue wire for example here or here it was touching the green wire same thing I don't think there's any damage to the green wire but still I'm gonna go and isolate everything with uh, electrical tape here you see so it was mainly this green wire this red wire uh, and here some of the other black wires which are power again so here this wire like everywhere i see things like that i'm gonna go and isolate it i'm gonna use a lot of electrical tape but we're gonna make sure that it is safe and then we're gonna run the other black wire all right so all the wires that had any signs of being affected by that wire in question have been isolated now you see i went through each and every one here inch by inch and i made sure that everywhere even if i was sure that it wasn't damaged it was just touching that wire i just isolated like just to to be on the safe side so now i'm gonna run the new one and we're gonna go from there and what happened I believe is because I'm sure that this thing happened twice because this was the original wire that was going here it got burnt and then they bypassed it and they put another wire here that was this one I cut it off but this is how it was so they bypassed this wire with a new wire and that happened again and I'm sure that this fixture here is the reason why because somehow it touched the ground i don't know we will make sure that it, it won't shorten again let me run the new wire so here's our wire we still need to solder it here to this one or figure out how we're gonna connect it but then it goes up goes down back on this branch here it goes like this because i think that's how it was because there were two wires next to each other so I believe that's how it was it was going into one spade connector like this female I'm not sure what it connects to we're gonna figure this out but there were it was coming down here and then it was coming back and coming on this branch and here it connects to these two other wires so we're gonna cut this eye off and we're gonna install a new one and we're gonna put the three wires together. Here we're gonna see how we're gonna do it. Maybe we're gonna solder it if it takes the solder. And here, I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. And when I start hooking it up, I'm gonna figure out, I'm pretty sure these, need, these two still need to be hooked up together because otherwise how is the power gonna go from here to here? right it needs it's coming from here that's the main one i believe and then it's going this way down and then back up and this way i just don't know what connector okay so here 
I was able to unsolder the old one and solder the new one. So that's good. Here now, let's replace this with this. That's the smallest one I have. Good, it's crimped, and like I said, the other end, this one, we're just gonna leave like that for now, and we will see what we're gonna plug it into, and then we're gonna figure out what connector we should put there. <laughs> Look at all that garbage, but this looks like factory now, doesn't it? So I managed to put the harness back. I just need to fish this end through to the engine bay and we're gonna hook this up. But you know what, before I put the dash on, because it's really hard to do everything from behind, I'm just gonna test wire everything to make sure that everything works. I'm gonna have to take out this switch as well. And we're gonna wire everything as it is here. We also, looks like this whole chain of Christmas tree lights. <laughs> These are, this is the illumination for the um, four gauges here. So this came loose from here, but look how it was done before with unisolated wires. I know this is negative in this car, it's not power, but still this can touch ground anywhere behind the dash and ground is positive. So negative is gonna touch positive and it's gonna burn. So I'm gonna have to fix this up. Initially this came off from here, but then they just made those paid connectors to do that. So I'm gonna fix this chain better. I'm also gonna have to make bridge because this is power to one of the gauges or ground to one of the gauges, but I need another three of these for the other three gauges to bridge them so the illumination can work. Some of the gauges don't need power, but the illumination for the gauges needs power. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring the schematic here. I'm gonna hook up everything and we'll make sure that everything works as it should. And then if everything works, then we're gonna go and switch the polarity of the car. I'm gonna show you how we can do that. All right, I think everything is hooked up. <clears throat> Not I think, I know that everything is hooked up. So, so these two black wires that we run here, actually it was one wire looped, right? Remember, so I cut it and I put this connector because that's for the windshield wipers. Turns out the ground for the windshield wiper switch. And this is the light switch and it's hooked up as it should. Ignition has never been disconnected. This is the fuel gauge with its um, illumination, the temperature gauge, with its illumination, the oil gauge only has illumination. And uh, the ammeter here in the back. Looks like there was something hooked up here as well on the amp gauge, which is not on the schematic. On the schematic, you only have the two. And I have an extra ground here. So this wire is ground, which in this case with this car is positive and this is negative, so this cannot be hooked up here because it's gonna be dead short. So that's not the wire. I don't think it was hooked up anywhere. I remember when I was taking it apart, it was just loose and I thought maybe it's connected to the ignition switch, but it's not because the ignition switch has all the wires that need to be hooked up there. And it doesn't seem like anything else was hooked up there. And it doesn't make sense to hook up ground to the ignition switch because again it's going to be that short at some point and this wire has that's how it was this is a green wire which goes to the fan switch and it's been disconnected from before as you know even the coolant hoses are disconnected from the heater so i'm not going to hook this up 
but everything else is hooked up. Oh, and I didn't run yet. I haven't run uh, ground from here to the other three gauges. So their illumination is not working now, but I'm gonna make sure, I'm not gonna hook up the dash completely because some of the bulbs are burnt. I tested them and they don't work. Uh, here, this one is missing. Actually, I took this one out because this one was not working. So I took this one from here, put it here, and that one is from the signal. But anyways, everything else is hooked up. The dip switch, I run the wire inside the engine bay and that's hooked up as well. Here, these are the two wires that come from the column switch this one for the overdrive and I haven't hooked that up yet. I'm gonna hook up the overdrive separately. So they were hooked up here and uh, these ones were also taking power on. So this is what was hooked up here. I see. So this brown wire was what was hooked up here for the overdrive. Okay, now I see. So the overdrive was powered up by this. And these wires go to this relay, which somebody installed there for the overdrive. But like I said, we're gonna hook up the overdrive later because we're gonna have to disconnect it anyway. So we're gonna leave this out for now. We're not gonna hook these up, but let's test everything. And yes, it works. I did test it already. So when we pull the, the switch for the lights only one position, we have only the marker lights here working. This one is working as well. And the ones in the back, plus the license plate lights are working. The ignition is off, I believe. Or is it? Oh no, it's on. So the ignition is not on, but we have the switch turned one position to the left, which turns only the accessories on. So that's gonna tell us now if the brake lights are gonna work. So I can press the pedal. Yeah, this one is working. Is the other one working? Yeah. Okay, signals. It's flashing even here now. This was the burnt wire before, so I don't know if it was flashing there before, but... Yeah, we have left signal, have left signal in the front, right signal, that one is flashing there, and that one is flashing. So signals work, and let's pull out the switch completely out. I have the battery charger hooked up, that's why it changes sound. So we have the two lights headlights on and with the dip switch we can switch between high beam and low beam and that's it for the outside of the car let's see on the dash now okay so um, the lights are still on so now our illumination should be working which I can see it's working on in this gauge because this one has the ground hooked up to it but I don't know if these other ones are gonna work so we need to give them, with my two, I can give them uh, ground, which in this case is power. So I can give them power. Yes, this one illuminates. Nope, this one doesn't. So the bulb is burned and this one works. So we need one bulb for here. Actually, I'm gonna take a bulb from here. Let me just test this. Yes. This one works. Now this one, we don't know which position we are in. Maybe we are in a low beam. So switch to high beam. Now it works, okay. So I'm gonna take this bulb and I'm gonna put it in one of these, the one that wasn't working. The fuel gauge wasn't working. Gonna turn the bulb a little. No. Okay, now it's working. This one is working. 
this one is working and this one and this one is working so we have lights in all of them now so I can assemble this part of the dash no problem here we need to turn the ignition on okay so this light comes on too uh, this is the dimmer for the dash lights obviously it works if they come on where's the one this one is the one that's working yeah I can see here that it's coming on and off from this switch so this is working properly so the only thing we need is two bulbs for here but I'm I put them there here we can do them later this is the illumination for the tachometer and the speedometer oh yeah we never tested the wipers okay we need the ignition for that there you go the wipers work they have only one speed so everything works as it should so i'm gonna disconnect the battery again we're gonna assemble everything we're gonna make sure that everything works except these two bulbs because I need to buy those, I don't have those but everything else should work and then we're gonna go and reverse the polarity of the car alright, everything is hooked up in the back now so the lights, the ammeter I'm not sure how it goes this way or this way and especially after we reverse the polarity so I'm not gonna mount the dash permanently until we figure this out because we might need to switch those so this is the fuel gauge it has it has common power coming through the voltage stabilizer through this green with black wire goes and feeds the temperature gauge and also the fuel gauge and this is the fuel sender and this is the temperature sender so that's it everything else is pretty straightforward right I run those black wires from here I bridge this to this to this and to this with this wire you see and the other one is the illumination the red with the white stripe I'm not gonna forget to hook up the oil line I'm gonna hook this up but like I said again we're gonna just put the dash standing there and we're gonna continue with uh, reversing the polarity all right, so it's all assembled and now everything works as it should, like the lights come on, you see. With the main beam, we have also this light coming on. The, I don't know if you see these, yeah, they all work. These two don't because, you know, we don't have bulbs in them, but signal, okay, we need to turn the ignition on. Signal works. The other signal works when we turn the ignition actually because that that was the accessory so when we turn the ignition this light comes on and we should start it now actually and see uh, oh i was able to pull the chalk manually okay let's see if this is gonna come off yep but our ammeter is pointing we need to reverse our ammeter, you see? Well, actually, actually, I'm not gonna do that yet. Why did it stay there? Okay, okay. We're not gonna do that yet because I'm not sure if after we reverse the polarity, the ammeter needs to be reversed as well. That I'm not very clear. So let's talk a little bit about that. So this is our diagram as it stands today. So if you look here, the battery is positive ground so what do we do to reverse the polarity well obviously we need to switch the battery terminals so now the positive is going to be the one that feeds the starter solenoid the starter the ammeter etc and the negative is going to be connected to the um, chassis but we, there are a few more items that we need to switch because they are polarity sensitive Obviously, all the bulbs in a positive ground car are uh, incandescent and they are not uh, polarity sensitive unless you installed LEDs that are specifically designed for positive ground cars, but these are very, very rare and I don't think that anybody does that. So, all the bulbs here, all the switches, 
the solenoid, the ignition switch, uh, everything here. The wiper motor even is not polarity sensitive. The starter motor is not polarity sensitive. What we need to switch though is the ignition coil because the ignition coil is polarity sensitive and if you don't reverse it, the car is still gonna run but the spark on the spark plug is gonna come from the wrong direction so the spark is not gonna come from the core to the body of the spark plug it's gonna come from the body to the core and we don't want that because that's probably killing like 50% of the um, performance of the car so we need to switch the ignition coil and of course we need to uh, repolarize the generator which is a very simple procedure if you have a radio installed in the car which is pretty complicated to install in a positive ground car but there are for example this one had a radio so that needs to be reversed as well but all the gauges and uh, bulbs and switches and even the horns and everything they are not polarity sensitive so that's everything that we need to do so for this car, I removed the radio already, so that's out of the way. We're gonna connect it later the proper way. The generator, we're gonna switch to an alternator later, but uh, for now, we still have a generator, so we're gonna have to repolarize it. And that's it. So let's reverse the battery, reverse the ignition coil, and repolarize the generator. These are the three steps that we need to do right now. So obviously to reverse the battery, in some cars you're gonna have to maybe turn the battery around if the cables are not long enough or get a new battery that is with the right terminals but here it's gonna be pretty easy because this is the ground that's grounded to the body over there and it goes to the positive in this case and the negative in this case is going to the starter solenoid over there so what we can do is I'm just going to, I'm not even going to remove the clamps from here. I'm just going to remove it from here and here. And this cable is going to come here. This cable is going to come here and that's it. I'm just going to make sure that they don't touch because this is a, a worrying me a little bit here. How close this is. Uh, it's not too close, but it is pretty close. And here too. And this, so we will see how we're going to do that. Since this cable is going to go there. I might run it from behind and it's gonna come this way so it doesn't touch because I'm a, a little bit crazy about those things. I don't want anything to shorten. So that's how I'm gonna reverse the battery polarity. The coil, it's even easier. This wire has to come here. This wire has to come here. That's it. What's going on? He lost his bow under the car. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to switch that and then we're going to polarize the generator, which again, it's a very easy procedure. All right, so the battery polarity is reversed. This is not going to be like that. You know, this engine is coming out. So when we put it back together, we're going to relocate this properly because that's, it's not going to be like that. Don't worry. So the positive is now connected to the solenoid over there and the negative is connected to earth also the ignition coil now this is reversed and again i'm gonna do the wiring management a little bit better when we assemble the car permanently but now it, everything is coming out so i'm probably gonna turn the coil 180 degrees around but we are even changing this coil anyway so it's just temporarily so we can make sure that we reverse the polarity of the car properly so now let's do the generator. So if you look at the generator down there, you have a big wire, brown with white, I believe, and a small wire that goes to the side of the generator over there. That one is brown with green, I believe, yeah. So the small one on the side is the field. And that one we need to connect two, three times for not even a second to positive of the battery and that's the whole process of polarizing the generator. So I'm just gonna take these jumper wires and I'm gonna connect let's say the red one to the field on the generator and now I need to just touch it two or three times to the battery positive side which is this one right so just touch it it's gonna spark 
we're just gonna touch it one two three times and that's it one two three that's it it should be polarized now okay the light came on let's see if it is gonna come off after it starts and if it starts <laughs> There you go. All right, so that's the whole procedure. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Now, of course, we're gonna have to be careful how we connect the radio. We can't connect it the same way it was connected before. We're gonna connect it the proper way. And uh, that's it. Now in this case, you can change all the bulbs to LEDs if you want, because the polarity is gonna be correct for LED. Uh, and everything that is uh, polarity sensitive now can be installed on this car. So that's it, I'm gonna cut this video here and I'm gonna walk away from the garage because I started the engine with the door closed. So it is pretty smoky here. So quickly guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and subscribing. Thanks for sharing and supporting the channel. Thanks for everything. Stay tuned for more videos on the TR4 and other Rusty Beauties, of course. And uh, you can join the Rusty Beauties group on Facebook. You can find my Patreon page if you wish to and uh, support me that way or send me one-time donations on my email elin.yakov at rustybeauties.com. But that's not gonna buy you anything because everything is free anyways. That's only a way for you if you wanna say thank you, Elin. And here's five bucks to buy a beer or something like that that's a way but again everything is free anyway so you don't need to support me financially to to have access to everything so once again guys thank you i'll see you in the next one bye